I don't hate Fred Phelps and Westboro Baptist Church the way most people do. One of the biggest reasons for this is because I actually have identification with them. I'm not a homophobic person, so that's not my identification. I'm not a fundamentalist, that's not my identification. I'm not a Christian, that's not my identification. Like them, I have a lot of venom in me, and I have manifested it in the ways they have. Right now, I'm doing very intensive soul searching. I want to improve myself and achieve my goals. Right now, I'm focusing, zooming in on Westboro Baptist Church because it represents a layer of my soul I am seeking to remove, the moral crusader level of my soul. This level of the soul is ineffective and it prevents me from getting what I want. I see myself in Fred Phelps in Westboro Baptist Church, thus I can't hate them. And I would like to read you a position paper from the autonomy party, the political party I have. And this represents my views since I am a member of the autonomy party, a founder in fact, and thus the changes I make in my personal life reflect the party. As you can see, I have some of the same themes as Fred Phelps does, and this was before I even cared two wits about Fred Phelps. I talk about how you're either 100% against abortion and alcohol or 100% for it, and those who are not doing anything about it are the opposite. Take a close look at what I write and see the comparisons, and this is why I need to change. I want to be an iconoclast a revered iconoclast and a moral crusader is not a revered iconoclast. It really reminds me of Fred Phelps' is gay pimp video of Bush. Autonomy Party Paper 141 A skier who never skis or a pro-lifer who never advances the pro-life cause by Andrew Bouchard. I do not ski. I do not participate in downhill or cross-country skiing. I do not recall ever skiing, but I acknowledge that I could have skied before and just forgot about it. Even if I skied once or twice, I still cannot be considered a skier. Because of this, I do not call or consider myself a skier. I am a runner. I run six or seven days a week in about 11 months out of the year, so I can call myself a runner. Thus, I would not consider someone who puts out a half-hearted effort a true runner. You have to run with substantial effort in order to be considered a runner. One must regularly or substantially participate in an activity in order to truthfully say one participates in the activity. If you participate in an activity with insubstantial effort, you cannot consider yourself a participant. Bush and some neoconservatives call themselves pro-life. They probably do think they are pro-life. But just because Bush and the neocons call themselves pro-life, that, do, that alone doesn't make them pro-life. Their slick tricks do not fool me. At one talk I organized, a representative from Missionaries to the Preborn insightfully suggested that even though he knew pro-choicers fear Bush's pro-life views, he didn't think Bush would advance the pro-life cause much. After an entire first term, plus over five months of a second term, this insight has thus far been right on the money. Bush and the neocons have had one of the greatest opportunities a person can have, perhaps the greatest possible opportunity, yet Bush and the neocons have done just about nothing to advance the pro-life cause. Just as someone who never skis cannot truly be considered a skier, one who makes a half-hearted effort at best cannot in any meaningful sense be considered pro-life. Bush and the neocons have their heart somewhere else in the pro-life cause. Bush and the neocons have disgraced the pro-life movement. The rank and file of the pro-life movement should not be held to the same standards as our feckless leaders. The pro-life masses do not have access to great power. Bush and the neocons do have access to great power, yet they refuse to use this power to advance the pro-life cause in any substantial way. Bush and the neocons could save the unborn now if they wanted to, but instead they have other priorities. I believe in order to be considered pro-life, 
you have to do at least a little something to advance the pro-life cause. I know I could do more as most of us could, but I at least do something. If I had power, I could do a lot more. The more formal power one has, the more one is obligated to advance the pro-life cause. Just as someone who never skis is not a skier, Bush and the neocons are not pro-life. To all the pro-lifers who voted for Bush, you got what you asked for. Abortions. www.autonomyparty.com